Space is something that has kept the modern man in her grip for centuries. The eternal abyss, either full of potential and possibility, or a pit of desperation and forgotten memories. The very essence of space exploration will change the way humans will not only perceive themselves, but the entire spectrum of life, meaning, and finding one's place in all of this. Much has happened since modern humans first emerged in Africa some 200,000 years ago. The humankind spread rapidly across most of the globe and soon the first civilizations took form. Scientific progress had been swift, though not without cost. Wars claimed millions of lives even before the atom was tamed, and the turmoil of the 21st century saw the mandate of the United Nations gradually expanded in an effort to create stability. By the early 22nd century, the supranational organization had become a de facto world government. Though some still resented the power wielded by the UN, as evidenced during the Mauritanian police action of 88, few could deny the technological breakthroughs that have come out of its sponsored research programs. With the recent completion of the first true starships, mankind was about to embark on a new era of space exploration. Earth itself had changed much throughout the millennium, and especially in the last couple of centuries. Interconnectivity broke new bounds, and all of the continents were now directly connected. Each continent had its own collection of governmental bodies that would eventually lead up through a hierarchy towards the United Nations of Earth with at the head Dolores Muanga, a stout and proud woman of royal descent that had her biggest challenge yet towards her. She would be both involved in governing Earth itself and the human's expanse throughout space. Throughout time, if history has taught us one thing, it is that the humans could always adapt. They were fragile creatures, but through hard work and cooperation, they always persevered. But their bane had always been to be a wasteful people, and nothing had changed even with the warnings that were heeded. The galaxy itself was so massively big that no one really knew how big it was exactly and what they would find. Was there other life out there? And if so, would we be able to communicate with it? To learn from it? Would it give us answers where we humans stood as a race? Earth was but a single water drop in a giant ocean, so easily forgotten if one tried to imagine how vast space really was. But of course, the expanse would begin in our own system. On the first day of the first month of the year 2200, it was on Sol where it all began. Many planets in this system had already been conquered by the humans, but without too much fruitful results in terms of expansion or finding, albeit a bit, useful resources. It was clear to many that the center of this system for humans would just focus on Earth itself. Its overpopulation had come to the point where they built towards the skies and underground. It was interesting to look back on how things went, with the human race competing to be the first to land on such a small thing as the Earth's moon, something that could now be done in a matter of minutes. But the moon itself did not provide Earth with any resources. Research centers, but most important, radar and radio equipment, were expanded in various facilities to function as a gateway and bridge between other planets, space stations, and eventually ships heading to different systems. The one in charge of Earth was Governor Hui Wu, who directly answered to President Muanga. Where she had both Earth and the expansion under her rule, Governor Wu only concerned himself with Earth. The several governing bodies who belonged to the different continents then answered to him. Earth at the moment was thriving. A well-established economy had little to fear, though overpopulation did threat the needle of landing into unemployment. Governor Wu was tasked with providing job opportunity, best suited to help the endeavor of human expansion. At the same time, there were those who feared the human expansion. Not in the sense that it should not be done, everybody agreed on that, but on the fact that if we might run into other species, that they might be hostile. 
rather than sending out science ships to the new systems first, there were those who agreed to send in Earth's fleet via the first and second planetary guards. But Muwanga disagreed. It was important to her that if contact would be established, that Earth would not pose any sense of threat, but instead of invitation and peace. As preparations were made for the first science ship to traverse to a new system, Muwanga approved the build of several mining and research stations within the Sol system. This would create work and provide resources that could directly be implemented within the human expansion. Mars was another location that the humans had dreamt of reaching for the longest of times, even fantasizing about Martians or aliens coming down to Earth to attack them. This never happened, and not much of value could be established here too. Just like with the Moon, multiple facilities, radar sites and similar functioning buildings were erected, though in lesser sense, as it was still further from Earth compared to the Moon. First, a mining station would be built near Saturn, and after that, near Triton. Some already saw this as the first steps towards the human expansion. Muanga deliberately waited until it was the year of 2200, as it symbolically would prove a new beginning for man. Everything that happened since January 1st contributed to this purpose, including the ship and its crew heading to build the mining station. After a little over two years, preparations were finally complete to get the traversal of the first science ship underway. It was decided to head towards what could only be described on the charter map as the upper system. A sense of direction within space was not the most logical one, but the humans of Earth did their best in portraying it in a way where it could be understood according to human law. It would take several months for the ship to reach the point to where it could traverse towards the system and Muwanga used the time she got to hold meetings that would last several days to set a focus on Earth's stance of the traversal. There were those abiding by a stance of harmony, of prosperity, and even a few who preferred domination. But all these points of view had in common a sense that alien life would be discovered to the point where one could communicate with it. As this was uncertain, the majority vote was handed towards expansion the initial reason for this voyage anyway. Extra funds were granted in research and establishments that aimed towards increasing a more efficient way of starting colonization once a suitable planet would be found. By now the mining station near Saturn had been completed as well. The ones who would run the station were part of the crew on the ship that helped build it. For the next two or three years, this would be their new home, until they would be replaced with a new staff and crew from Earth. Via this station, new raw materials could be transported to Earth to be implemented within the needs of the humans themselves and towards the expansion program. The ship that built the mining station near Saturn had enough building materials with them to where they could head straight towards Triton and make a research facility there. After a journey of roughly five months, contact was established with the science ship that had successfully traversed into a new system labeled Barnard Star. Over the last years, much data on planet formation had been collected from facilities in the Sol system, but now they finally had a chance to learn directly from the source via surveying equipment. This would also take several months, but it was interesting to find out exactly what components would be found in a completely different solar system. The crew on the ship was doing well, and a live connection feed was established and broadcasted on screens everywhere on Earth. The citizens were all ecstatic, but the events unfolding in the Barnard Star were only really important to the couple of dozens of crew aboard the ship. Back in the Sol system, things went their usual way as the research station near Triton was coming along nicely. With the surveying of Barnard Star underway, it was greenlit to ready up another science crew and ship for a surveying mission elsewhere. There were simply too many systems to leave up to one ship and crew, and after the initial success of the Barnard's traversion, there was bound to be more systems lying in wait. The ship would be constructed at the Sol Station, as at the same time a crew would be trained and prepared back on Earth as on training facilities on both Luna and Mars. There was some debate on who would lead the second science team that would do the surveying in a new system. 
there were three possible candidates, but the honor befell on the most veteran of them, scientist Karim Farkzad. He would lead his crew on the UNS Sojourner towards surveying the system that could be described on the chart as to the left, and the journey was scheduled for the end of 2203. Though many exciting things had happened over the last three years for the humans, for the overall galaxy, it was but a mere second that had already been forgotten. But one thing was for sure. The humans were ready to leave their mark on the ever-expansive being known as the vast galaxy.